Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's broadcast. Tonight, the Aguilon Ronimo show match. We got six devs duking it out on the new beta map. I believe the beta goes live tomorrow, but if you're at PAX, you would have seen it. We would have been able to play it, but for those of us that weren't lucky enough to go, this is kind of the first in-depth look at it. I'm the Foregore Jester. With me tonight... That slow wolf. I always want to do that intro by Weasel, but I don't have a guitar. <laughs> That's totally cool. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me on here, Four Court. Yeah, not a problem. I was actually looking for Naza before, but he recommended you, and you were not busy. So, hey, things make magic happen. It's easy, easy enough like that. But, you know, uh, Bad Aku, you did place fairly well back at the Awesome Not Pro League tournament number two. So when I say that you know stuff... I'm going to hopefully convey that trust to the viewer. Uh, well, I'd like to think I know stuff, but I won't assume I know absolutely everything. Of course, there are going to be some things that you're going to be there to pick up on. Well, let's uh, speaking of that, let's actually take a quick look at what we're showing. It is the Agula show match. And if you're on the video, Mr. Slowwolf, we will get it rolling. I am good to go whenever you are good, sir. All right, so three, two, and one. Play. All right, so Dusterwood, Kuhn, and Jin going up against Ali for Machilion and Nas. Now it is a pre-frapsed video. The devs were kind enough to kind of put it together for us. Unfortunately, Jin forgot to put on his sound on his frap, so he got uh, beaten by wet noodles afterwards. Ah, uh, well, that's okay. We don't necessarily need sound out of Jin too much. We've got the sound out of the other five devs that are in this match with really interesting team makeups too. Keep in mind, these guys are here to play for fun and just to really show off what the map is like. So don't expect to see, you know, all the crazy stuff that you're used to seeing in public matches these days. Right? All right. Necessarily, so. anyway. <laughs> so this is the new map, uh, definitely a lot more runic, definitely a little bit more of a rustic feel, but as you can see, a little bit of an arena here in the mid. We already got that cocoon going down, and Dusterwood's going to drop for the first blood. Yep, Leon shows off exactly how powerful plus four damage can be from behind. You do not want to run away from a backstabbing Leon this early in the game. It really can hurt if you're not careful. Yeah, backstabs, early backstabs. Now, in terms of some of the things around here, you can see Ollie just checking out this top hidden area that has a health globe in it as he takes care of the creeps. It is a two-lane match, kind of with that arena in the mid, but Jin down here in the bottom creeps on top of a hidden area there as well. Yeah, the hidden area upstairs is far more open, though. You've got uh, the ability to kind of just drop down from any point you like. The area in the bottom, however, has that thick, solid ceiling so if you're stuck in there, you can't jump over anybody. And you, that means that you really need to be careful when you go down there. If you get caught, you're stuck. You really have to go one way or the other. Now, speaking of getting caught, Dusterwood just picks up that new stealth upgrade that is going to be on this map, unique to it. And, well, it works exactly like stealth. There's really nothing else to it. So he's going to jump on top of Ollie here, but Ollie with the quick reaction, cocoons him and dances his way to safety. Oh, Genji, don't we love you and your silly cocoon? <laughs> Some would say they don't, but that's because they're on the receiving end of it. Well, yeah, that's true. But uh, going back to that invisible orb, that really does kind of set the flavor for the entire map, uh, being an entirely gank-oriented and very much an aggressive uh, assassin type of map. Like, you really can't go ahead and sit back and farm. This this really does favor the aggressor. And as you see right there, Kuhn couldn't get out of there. He couldn't even jump over the other Leon. That ceiling is so short. You really need to be careful down there. Yeah, it's a small ceiling, and especially with the bigger character models like Nas, for example, I could definitely see some body block action going down there. But also, like, Nas, I mean, he's a big robot that self-destructs, and that's a really narrow area down there. I can definitely see the potential for ambushes. Oh, it, it's impossible to miss your abilities down there. If a clunk got you covered in there, or even a derple, like a derple could set up a snare in there and there's no way you could even get past it. There's nothing you could do at that point. So it, it, it lends itself very well to be able to gank people either in there or to maneuver around people to gank them and catch them on the other side of the above area, which is almost as thin. Not quite, but almost. It's definitely gank worthy. And Ollie just gets out of there, no real problem. Uh, Leon couldn't really stop him from, you know, for, couldn't stop him from getting away if he tried anyhow. Yeah, not not really. And yeah, another one of the benefits here of this map is that, yeah, uh, the the vertical inclined, you know, uh, 
Genji, kind of, I suppose, but more like Yuri and Jin. They're going to have a, a lot more freer time there in the mid. Speaking of the mid, here goes Matt Chanelion. He gets himself that orb, and instantly they just lose track of him. There's so many bumpers, so many different escape routes you can use with that invisibility, and he gets out of that one, you know, skin of his teeth, but alive. Yeah, it's demonstrating the often underused and underlooked skill of juking in this game. A lot of other RTS-style MOBAs have that, and it's an essential part of the game. Now, this map really puts that to the fore, and if you know how to juke, you're going to do very well off in this map. Now, Dusterwood, he's going to have to defend down here with Jin, but Jin not looking so good. A little under-leveled as well. Uh, le level 3 compared to at least Nas 5, both of his teammates 4 as well. But a little bit of creep farming, Ollie now 5. He's just going to be poking from underneath those tur uh, underneath those platforms, but he's going to miss out that cocoon. He's going to have to back off, wait for that cooldown, unless Kuhn can take him down. Yep, and see, he couldn't really jump past uh, Kuhn down there, and then Dusterwood just comes out of nowhere and spike dash. Bob's your uncle. He died. Nothing you can really do about it at that point. Now, I'm thinking that he, uh, Dusterwood there actually has that double, but, oh, this could be dangerous. Nas, he doesn't have that self-destruct, unfortunately, but he's going to come oh. down here, take a big bite out of Kuhn, oh. and mash Leon to take that one. What a wonderful kill. Now, that that's what I'm talking about, though. That invisible orb come out of nowhere as a clonk or a derple and just surprise your opponent. There's nothing they can do. Uh, I have to keep an eye on that timer though to you know, see how often that orb generates. A lot of people are going to be really mad that anybody can just pick up invis now, especially somebody like Clunker Durple who normally would have to use clever positioning to be able to get that kind of surprise on people. Uh, clever positioning of the invis on a cloud uh, for a rainy day, but now we got the self-destruct, Nas feeling real confident about that kill. But yeah, I mean, it just throws in another factor into these maps. I'm going to be very interested to see how the majority do kind of handle it, but Ollie just could not get away out of that one, and the double dash from Dusterwood able to take him down. Yeah, no, he he got stuck too. He managed to actually jump past Leon this time, which didn't happen the last couple of times that they were ganked down there. But once again, just showing you, if you surround somebody, chances are they're going to die. It's really, really important that you know exactly where your opponents are, and that's kind of difficult considering how big the middle part is. Now Machelion going to be able to take a little bit of damage here on top of the Dusterwood, reconvenes with the rest of his team. We also now see have Cherylblaze on Coco, and if you notice, actually, uh, you know, everyone here has a skin. But Machelion is going to be able to get in there a lot of damage, but a lot of return on top of him as well, actually not getting the best of it. And now we're back to the silent mode of Jin, but wow, that was a real quick juke there on top of Nas. Oh yeah, no, Nas managed to just miss absolutely everything unfortunately and then just got surrounded there is not much he can do and especially as a clunk it's already hard enough to juke because you're absolutely massive oh and zin gets taken down by a random tongue good job by mash Leon managing to kill him and then using his invis to juke out of the way but uh, as i was saying before it's really hard for clunk or big characters like Durple and the scoldier as well to actually be able to dodge and jump past so if you're a small character and you had troubles i can only feel for the big ones yeah, we're going to have to really keep an eye on that bottom lane. I kind of almost feel like you're forced into the top or the middle for those bigger character models just because of the narrowness here of this bottom lane. But Dusterwood, oh, self-destruct to the face. He's going to go down for yet another kill. And I think, I, I'm, I'm not too sure, but I think Blue actually has the kill advantage right now. Uh, it is entirely possible, but I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, I think it's pretty even right now. It's just, oh, and Kuhn's about to get caught, but he, he's stuck between two people, but he just manages to slip through, and oh, no, Nas misses the bite. That's just unfortunate, but that was really close. Almost got Kuhn, almost outmaneuvered him, but he was far too wily and far too slippery. I was talking to Kuhn, actually, uh, a few hours ago, just asking him a few questions about his uh, build that he does like to run, as you can see here. He does not have invis. He just has pure tongue and blade damage. So it's it's a blessing as well as a curse. For example, we're on a big jukey map like this, invis is going to be a big asset. Mm -hmm. No, I, I would argue that invis, even just the base ability without getting anything else in it, is already a huge asset. Being able to set up those invisible tongues that you wouldn't really be able to pull off by surprise normally is a huge bonus. But on top of that, you're right, it does allow you to juke, it allows you to maneuver in a way that you wouldn't be able to normally, even with Leon. And for a guy that's really lacking on escape ability normally, that's usually kind of important to have at least one ranking. 
Yeah, but hey, that's what he does. He says he wins with it, so whatever works. Now, Dusterwood trying to put down a little bit more pain here. You can also see the Trailblaze from Jin, but Mash and Leon, gotta remember they have their own enemy, uh, Leon, on top of things. So he's looking for that kill. Isn't able to quite grab it. And looks like we're just going to go back more towards uh, Farming, but Nas underneath. I'm not too sure anyone knows that he's there, and he's just shooting the... <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. That's unfortunate. He managed to get a kill, so it's equalized. But Zin, I think, gets the bigger deal out of that. He needs that solar, and getting that 60 solar is a huge bonus to him. As you saw right there, uh, Coco has a really big advantage in this map. Just because the walls are so thin, it's really easy to maneuver around this massive jungle. Wow, good job by Michelle Leon, just tonguing in and assassinating Kuhn on the red team there. Just showing off how powerful Invis can be. But as I was saying before, uh, Coco is really going to benefit in this level just because the walls are so thin and she has such a huge amount of places to roam with her Coco Ball and just surprise people with random uh, nukes out of nowhere. So there's going to be some characters that have a huge benefit from that. Well, I'm looking at Zen. I think he has cooldown on Ball, the Trailblaze, and maybe one in health, but he's not exactly the richest at this point. Still a little underleveled. Eight to the nine here of everyone else on the screen. But, yeah, going back up and forth, uh, move speed is going to be really key to getting lane to lane as well. But this could be bad for Dusterwood as he gets hit by that cocoon. Nope, it's going to be the ball knocking away Nas. Good job there from Zen defending his teammate. But Kuhn could be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, definitely. He just got cocooned, and I have, I'm going to assume that he's going to get murdered in the face. Yeah, there it is. Michel Leon managing to accurately hit him with his sword and then get away completely safe and sound. Killing Machine comes out. Jin's going to eat that cocoon. Not, nothing else really to start it up. Now, Jin did pick up uh, the stealth there, but immediately just canceled it with the Trailblaze. I don't think he meant to do that per se. I wouldn't exactly waste that right off the top, of, you know, right off the top of my head. But at the same time, you know, accidents happen. You'll have your Vinny teammate who uses the Invis upgrade, and then you're you're auto attacking, and you just lose it sometimes. So it's gonna it's gonna take a certain presence of mind and planning really to kind of pick that up. If you pick it up by accident, chances are it's just gonna disappear. Wow, talk about a sick Spidey sensor on Machelian. Avoids that tongue, lands the return damage on top of Kuhn. Now you also notice top lane, that first tower is down, so the money advantage is going slightly towards the blue team, but all three of the extraneous towers that remain are really hurt. Oh, absolutely. On but. top of that, <laughs> on top of that, what uh, taking out that top turret allows them to do is actually start farming their side of the uh, jungle area a lot more safely. Uh, without that turret up there to kind of guarantee a free barrier, it's a lot more dangerous for the red team to kind of hide around up there, and it allows blue to start controlling the uh, a further left side of the map. Ooh. Ooh, this could be dangerous. Nas, he's invis. He activates. Oh, and that Did is that good. explode just go off without affecting the invis? Um, I think he started it. Yep. Wow, okay, that's that's new and interesting. That would be terrifying. Wonder if that's a bug or not, but uh, I'll have to make sure that I ask the developers next time I see him. But if we can activate self-destruct WoW Invis and then you kind of get revealed when it explodes, oh, that could be another whole level of matchmaking. Oh, that would be another whole level of frustration. I think a lot of people would call for nerfs at that point. And Ollie's in a really bad spot, and no, uh, he's going to die to blaze damage at the very least. Goes down to the psionic hands off of Coco, but Zin gets nuked, gets out of there as quickly as she possibly can to pick up the solar crabs on the left and gets right back into the fight. Meshelion comes up, starts trying to cut people up, but you know, he's a little outnumbered, two to three from really bursty knots, so he's just going to stay safe for now. Man, Meshelion, though, is up 6-0. Kill, kill death count. Uh, very impressive stuff from him so far, but you know, towers down, lots of aggression still going back and forth. We did see the kill on top of Kuhn. Kuhn 0 and 5, almost the exact reverse of Mash and Leon. I won't, oh, and see right there, there's an explode and the clunk was completely invisible. I'm not sure if that's a bug or not. I'm going to assume that the beta knots are going to have a word or two to say about that, but that's a talk for another time. For now, uh, I, I, I don't mean to say that there's, you know, Yes, Absolutely you do. Absolutely nothing behind getting <laughs> Invis on Leon, but it seems as if getting Invis on Leon seems to be helping out Nashelion's early game. 
All right, so we did have a return kill, I think, on top of Nas Jin still defending up to level 12. Ollie there, 12, but Dusterwood gonna be taking some damage. A nice ball to the face, though, and that's gonna save his life at least for now, unless of course Leon just comes out of nowhere. But farm up a little, few more, uh, a few more creeps there, get some health. Dusterwood just gonna go right back to the bottom lane. But there's the mash, and Leon gets his damage and immediately makes his exit. Yeah, no, he just gets out of there, no problem. That's the great thing about the bumpers in this level, huge amounts of mobility, it doesn't matter which character you are. And on top of that, it seems as if there's a completely non-existent area in the middle. There's that little stone area with the eye in the middle in the bottom lane that you can just fall through. There's absolutely no glass platform or anything there, so if you just drop through, surprise! <laughs> Not much you can do about that. Yep, pretty much. Now Zen gonna play a little bit of uh, chicken here with Nas and his bullets. But Mash and Leon down there as well. They're looking for the kill. Nas not able to get down in time with that Trailblaze. I think it's safe to say we got uh, speed on that Trailblaze now. But yeah, as you said, you know, the blue team can now start farming the red jungle. And that's exactly what they're doing. Oh, but it's too bad because that just wasn't good enough to get Nas out of there. Wow. However, Nas managed to get them low enough that Machelion just cut them apart with his built-in cleave. Goes in, but Zin has no clue where he is, and he gets tongued down two crits. Zin needs to get out of there, but Machelion decides to port out two just to make sure that he can go back home and buy. 9-0. Yeah, no, Ooh, yeah, no, he is massive right now. He got a, he's got a lot of farm. And that's scary considering what kind of team that they've got. On the right side, they've got Genji and Clunk to back him up. So two really bi either big and beefy on Clunk's side or really supporty and able to really keep the Leon in the fight uh, for Genji. You know, it just they're able to keep their investment alive, which is really important. But on the other hand, the other team has a lot more late game. And if Vinny and Leon and Coco get a lot of farm, that's a lot of farm, then they might just be able to pull this out. But for now, this looks like it's belonging in the blue team's court. Well, I don't think Meshillian actually expected to lose out on that duel, but, you know, Kuhn's sitting now at 2-7. Fairly sure he's already maxed out his blades. We did see into the shop there of Meshillian, and he did actually get his max out, but Nas coming in gets himself the double with that explode. Man, there's just so much hidden vision here. I can just see so many clunk players coming out from the beta knots and going to just take advantage of this. Oh, well, which is going to be a welcome change considering how little of clunk we've really seen since the last couple of patches where he got nerfed and so many of the characters that he had problems with got buffed. So Nas not able to quite take the kill on top of Kuhn, but Ollie with the cocoon doesn't net a kill. But hey, we've equalized out the towers. The top one now down uh, due to that push there on Kuhn. So despite two teammates down, he was able to push out, grab the kill, and didn't give up his health as a kill either. No, absolutely not. But the good thing about being able to push people back is that even though it, they're not dead, it still is a couple of seconds where you can push forward. Zin gets out of there with his life. Not quite. There's Dot on Genji's auto attack. I completely forgot about that. Nas is running away for his life, but nope. Vinny's just going to catch up to him, bubble him in the face. And that's all she wrote. Nah. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, the Total Biscuit voice, uh, really fun times. Ollie looking for an escape here. Machelion there as well. Takes down Ollie, believe it or not. Uh, very powerful auto attacks. But we also got a super droid down there, so that probably was a little bit of a factor. But Kuhn still going up for him. Looking for the kill, is able to grab it in Viz. Kuhn's got to be happy about that. Absolutely great prediction on Kuhn's part, making sure that he kept on swinging even though he couldn't see him. Totally worked out for him. That was awesome, and this allows the blue, sorry, the red team to actually get in a serious amount of damage. If they're careful about it, and if they're coordinated, they should be able to take out the bottom turret really easily. And there it goes. Yeah, there it goes. So it looks like you're about maybe one, maybe two seconds ahead of me in the video. As I said, I was hoping we could keep it synced, but I okay. Well, think, here I'll just pop, here, well, I'll I figured up. this would be an issue, but don't. I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying things happen. It's all good. Yeah. Looking at uh, Nas, however, just getting his ass completely kicked as Kuhn now on a killing spree. Man, he's actually come back really nice from a 0-5 to a 4-7. Oh, absolutely. And it seems like Machelion has lost him. Could not quite predict where Kuhn was going. But hey, Kuhn was juking around in Invis. It's really hard to really get a bead on a Leon who's really random and you don't know and can't predict where he's going. So. But uh, you were right about that push in the bottom. I mean, that tower is now down. The pressure's on. Red has this big momentum. And wow, another kill going on top of Genji. Not the game for Oli. 
No, absolutely not. Ollie is just not getting. Uh, well, it was not sticking around with this team, really. The thing about Genji is that unless if he's going left click to win, it's very difficult to justify him ever being alone. His cocoon only works really well with other people, and his Monarch's Blessing, well, only works really well with other people. So you can't really say that it's uh, anybody else's fault but his own for not sticking around with his friends. Now, also remember, this is on the you know the new beta map, but it's also the new beta build, so there might be a few nerfs here on top of Genji that we're not taking into account, which is why he's not left click to win. But wow, that damage from Nas. Yeah, I know. Nas's explode is always going to be a problem. Clunk is. It's not that he's actually weak, it's just that his counters, or at least his characters that can dodge him really easily, i.e., Vinny and Genji and all that stuff, just kind of ruin Clunk's day. And they've been really present lately, so a lot of people haven't been seeing a lot of Clunk. But you should never underestimate how much 96 damage in one explode in a huge area of effect can do. It ruins people's days. Well, let's see, you can get, what, a 96 damage explode and then a 42 bite snare? <laughs> well, at least you can go, you know, pretty crazy on the damage spectrum or you can go really heavy on some other stuff, but Clunk is always going to be a very powerful character. And down goes the tower on bottom, almost manages to get Kuhn, but Kuhn barely manages to make it away with his life. But that's the last defense for the blue team. Pretty much everything is open for the red team now. They've got easy access to the entire jungle. I, 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 this is gonna be a really tough game for Blue to win right now. Yeah, I'm not look. I'm not liking their chances uh, anymore. Zin actually gonna be looking for that escape. Does get taken down by Nas. Really nice attempt to play interference there by Kuhn, but. Hey, the drill is now under attack. We got a clear pathway into the base. Super Droid coming up here as well as Dusterwood nearly gets destroyed. Nearly, but he just manages to fly away farther than Clunk can go. But hey, we got this duel up top with Machelion and Kuhn. Kuhn's constantly getting hammered by bullets and oh no, the explode almost gets him, but it slows him down and nope, nope, not quite. They couldn't quite kill Kuhn. Now, as you guys noticed, there was that blue barrier right at the mouth to the jungle there it's quite literally in the mouth there that mouth barrier there can only be taken down if you get rid of all the base defending towers all the base defending turrets there once you get rid of that the jungle is another lane that you can just use yep no that's a great observation right there it was just watching this bloodbath Dusterwood however able to pick up the double and the triple with the Nas just kind of no place to go at the end of all that and I, I don't know, there should be some kind of special award for triple kills like that, my god. Oh, there definitely needs to be a triple kill announcement that comes out. I really want that. Ronimo, please implement it as quickly as possible. We need it. <laughs> Ronimo, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, Ronimo, please. Uh, it seems like they're going to take out the top turret, which is a smart move. They don't need to take out the core right now. They could try and get in some damage, or they can get rid of the last line of defense and just absolutely control and own this map. That's far more important. And as you can see, Zin now making use of that new uh, pathway into the map. Dusterwood looking for that invis. Actually has it on his spike dive, but the double damage comes out on top of Ollie. And now Ollie with Jin there as well. Just has to run for it, but Mash and Leon will clean it up. And, uh, well, they'll stay in the game at least for a few minutes longer. Well, they're not, again, they're not out of this. I, I would say that no game of Awesome Nuts is completely over till the Fat Lady sings. Especially in this map where so many turnaround opportunities are available with the ganks, the juking, and everything else. But uh, this is this is not looking particularly safe for the blue team. Uh, I, I will grant you that having all those turrets down is a huge disadvantage, especially in this map. And the, the zoom, zoom, zoom. It's the new Easter Bunny, or Duracell Bunny. <laughs> that Coco <laughs> just gets out of that one. But hey, someone's in the back here, probably Kuhn. Can't actually see him quite yet, but yeah, it's definitely Kuhn trying to do a little bit of backdoor action. Actually chases off Master Leon, 80 damage uh, explode from Nas, and he still doesn't go down. No, not quite. He's got enough HP to be able to survive this, no issues. And uh, that that's probably going to spell the end of this drill core if they're not very careful. Oh no, what a waste of a cocoon, completely mistimed it. Clunk's explode gets wasted as a result. Zin barely manages to get away, but probably will die at a dot. There's Kuhn trying to run away. But <laughs> hey, hey, would you look at that? It looks like Zin does have regen, and on top of that, got an amazing kill. Machelion takes out the <laughs> Vinny. Wow, this is just action packed. It's hard to keep up, but that Leon managed to actually take out the, the Vinny very easily. And now it's between Kuhn and Machelion. I am astounded at how much action is going on right now. Kuhn kills Michelleo. <laughs> wow. Last dish, Jeffrey. That's frustrating, but yeah. uh, that's the end of that. That 
core is down and that's game over for blue team. GG, well played. So there you go, guys. Devs <laughs> do know how to play this game. Just a tad. Look at them. Nine, you know, League Nines, League Eights. League Two there on Jin, you know, good good times overall. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed this preview of the match. The devs very gracious uh, to give us that kind of footage there from Ronimo Games. But Aguilon coming out next patch. I believe the beta goes live tomorrow. Are you going to be in that, Mr. Slowwolf? Uh, yeah, I am as of recently one of the beta knots, so I'm looking forward to being able to actually stream some of my own beta content at some point. It should be pretty good. That's going to be an experiment and it's, it's going to be an experience really in a big way just because of how much stuff is going to be changed but again i can't really say anything i'll have to let you guys see on the stream and when patch day comes out all right so again hopefully you've enjoyed that preview again beta goes live tomorrow so hopefully we will be able to solidify that this is a solid map and it is ready to go and the rest of us will be able to play it unfortunately i'm not in the beta so i'm just gonna have to live vicariously through you mr wolf Hey, if I can make as many people live vicariously through me, I don't even care. It's all good by me. <laughs> Alright, so where can people find you out there, sir? Uh, you guys can find me at my Twitch TV channel, www.twitch.tv slash slowwolf. You can find me there. I'll also upload the VODs to my YouTube channel, so that's www.youtube.com slash user slash slowwolfgame. It's going to be a fun video. For sure, and if you're just new to my kind of stuff here, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, the Four Court Jester. And uh, guys, I guess we'll see you online. Ladders have reset. I actually hit League One today, so congratulations, Four Court. That's that's no mean feat. I actually dropped down to League Three because of, well, I'm just bad. <laughs> yeah, I didn't keep it long. Trust me. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I'm sure you can pick it back up. Just you know, means you need to own some more space. It's, it's no biggie. <laughs>